Okay, welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have you got for us this week, Mark? I've got Add Parameter, Rory. And uh, let me, I, I had to kind of build a test app to show you the context in which this is really, really useful. Um, just in a nutshell, Add Parameter will add a parameter to a particular method call. The method I want to add a parameter to, or eventually I'm going to want to add a parameter to, is this find method right here. Okay. This find method is inside of a class called cell cache, which maintains a uh, multi-dimensional array of cells. Yep. Each cell has some text in it, and all it does is it simply iterates through all of those uh, rows and columns and finds the cell, then checks to see if the cell has a match. And in there, it's just looking right now, it looks like this, content is not null, and the index of the text with uh, ignoring uh, the case is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So it's basically just a simple text match in this cell, um, which has other things I might later want to do a search for, for example, the creation date or the app name, Okay. as an example. So now, from that's called from this test text find method, which let's go ahead and we'll just run this now. So you can see that everything is working um, uh, here. And there you can see it passed down there at the bottom. Sure. And uh, up here, just to, I'll show you what's happening. We're creating a new temporary cell cache with four columns and five rows. We're setting the content for specific cells to, for example, here, hello world. And then we're looking for a search for the world. We're checking to see if we get the results. And do we have one entry that comes back? Is that... Mm -hmm. Result count one. Yep. And if so, is that column and row, is it three and two like we're expecting? And then we go in and we modify the cell cache, adding more content at a different cell location. Yep. We go back and repeat the same uh, search for the word world. And now we're checking and expecting to see if the results are two. And we're comparing the, the column and row of the first result. Is it at one and two? Does that match this location here? And then is the second result at three and two, which matches... Um, this location right here that we set the content at. Okay, that's good. Just to remind people, we are doing a case insensitive search, which is why we're finding a lowercase world, despite both the examples having a capital W. Right, so I've got that call here. Mm -hmm. And if I just do a tab to next reference, I should find it in one more spot, uh, which is out here in my main window test application. So if we look at my solution, I have a lower level, uh, a lower level class library called DXLs and an upper level class uh, testing app, testing framework, kind of an interactive testing framework uh, called uh, the Grid UI. Sure. And if I do a run on this, just so you can see this, so this is happening inside the button search click. And in fact, if I come in there and hit uh, tab to next reference on it, there you can see uh, it's this search button right here. And this is what the window looks like um, right there. So I enter my text. Now, you can see I've also anticipated wanting to extend the search. I've added uh, find results after and select a date. But let's just do a quick run of this so you can see it. And so here it is right here. If I just hit search without entering any text, it'll come back and enter and come back with all of the sample test data that I built right here. So I basically came in and said, let's create a cell cache of five by five mm -hmm. and let's create uh, some sample data I'll make the app name no, uh, empty, but the content will be the actual number of the the cell. So okay. the content as a string will be the number of the cell. And the creation date, I decided, let's just make it today's date minus one day for every index that we increment. Does that make yeah. sense what okay, I'm doing? Okay, so you've got some nice generated data there, uh, a few dates, some uh, numeric content, and, of course, the app name equals blank. Right, and so when I hit search, it says, okay, let me go through and find everything. And it says, well, I found everything. Everything matches because I'm passing in no text for the search. Yep. And then we've got a two string on the cell, which is basically coming in and saying, filling in this data right here, giving me the, the content, the position, the column, the row, and the creation date, which you're seeing uh, right here in the list. So everything's coming yeah. back. These a are nice the summary of the cell's data as a string. And the date. Now, what I want to do is I want to change it. Well, first, let's specify an inter let's do a search. So let's search for the number one. It's only searching through the content. Uh -huh. So we're expecting it to find this entry and everything with the 10s through the 19s and yep. 21. Sure. So let's hit search, and we look pretty good. Does look good, okay. yeah. But what I want to do is I want to add a parameter to that search method, the find method, so that I can pass in a date as well, so that I can pass in this date from my, my date picker, my calendar picker right here. Yep. 
So let, let's do that. So uh, I stopped the application. Uh, I'm over here in, uh, let's go find, whoops, I want to go over here. Close that down. Um, let's go to our find uh, method right here. And this is where we want to add another parameter. Now the parameter we want to add is from uh, calendar. And calendar, uh, I think it's got maybe, well, is that like a selected date property? That's what I want to add right there. Show. Sure. So I'm going to come over here to where I want to add it. I could put it at the beginning if I want to add it at the beginning. But if I had, and if I had multiple parameters in this argument list, I would just put the caret at the point where I want to insert that parameter. Okay, good. So it's going to pay attention to exactly where you are, the context sensitive yeah. once again. Right, exactly. Now I just hit uh, um, the code rush key, which for me is num0, but it might be um, other things for you because you can rebind it. Sure. And I'm going to choose add parameter, which you can see right there at the top of the list. And now it specify, it's asking me to specify an argument. Now it's giving me null to start with, mm -hmm. right? Um, also notice right here, it's like, wait, no overload for find takes two arguments. That's because, well, what Coderish is doing is it's giving you the user interface for this refactoring. The interactive part of it is right in the code. Yep. So all we need to do is paste. We just paste in that calendar.selected date. Yep. And we hit enter on it like that. And now it's going through... And it's, it's now asking us, it's looking at the other calls and saying, hey, well, what do you want to do here? Right? Yeah. So, for example, here I could maybe, uh, I could pass something in. Like maybe I could type in null. You can see, notice it's typing in null for me down here as well as a sure. suggestion. Or I can just go with that datetime.min value if I want to. So we, we've effectively populated the first instance where you actually started this, this operation with the value the you had first, on the clipboard, right? The first, the first reference, the first call. Right. But was populated. Code Rush is now taking Good. you to the second call. And actually, we can see the third one just sat there right in front of us, just in case. Uh, but it's right. basically saying, well, you might not want the same value being passed in in every single case. So here's a sensible default. Obviously, you've got something on the clipboard you could overwrite it with, but this is another sensible default, potentially. And it's just prompting you with something that seems perfectly reasonable. But you can obviously change that. Right. If I change this to like max value, for example, notice again, it's changing in the second location. Mm -hmm. Once I hit enter here, it'll take me to the second location that's already on screen. So I can change that again if I want to, but it's saving me some time. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have this find this date that we pass in is going to be the uh, min acceptable date of the, for the cell. So if the cell has got a creation date that's pr older than this date, then we won't return it in the find. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So by default, we'll pass in min value for these two. Notice also that these finds do not have the squiggly underline. That means that Code Rush has already gone out and changed the declaration of the find method for us. Okay, so in the first okay. instance, we we were basically telling Code Rush what to do. And because we hadn't confirmed that first fact, the, you know, we were right. passing a date, it hadn't yet gone and altered the find method itself. By the time we reach this second instance, it's already done that alteration. The find method has a parameter with a name and a type and everything, and it's, it's therefore not in error to pass the min value for date in as we are currently doing. Yeah, let me just open this up over here so you can actually see it. Here's the find, the find method right here, and here's the declarations given us. Notice it calls it name right there right now. Sure. So, so just as a reminder, this is going to be the minimum date for the results. So we're essentially filtering the results is what we're doing. So you might think of it as, please give me results greater than this. And the most default date for that is the earliest possible date that is recognized by the date time type. Right, which is going to be min value. So I'm going to hit enter here. It takes me to the next call. I'm going to hit enter here. Now I can hit control enter if, let's say, there are hundreds of these. Sure. I can hit control enter if I'm done, if I essentially know that this is the value I want to pass in mm -hmm. for all of the others. So I've now added, I've gone through all the calls now, and now it takes me here into the find method. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in on, we'll just call this the, uh, the min date, like yeah. that. Okay? So, and then I hit enter. So now it has updated that all across the board. In fact, we can verify this by going in and running the test. We should be able to come right in over here uh -huh. and say run the test. We should see that pass. Okay, it's passed with no change there to the code. And we can verify it by running the application as well. If we go ahead and run this application, um, you can see this as well. So we've successfully added one parameter. If I do a search, there's everything. Mm -hmm. I come in and search for the number two. There's just that. If I search for the number three, you can see just that showing yeah. up in the results. Okay? Good. But we want to now make it so the results are now working for the for based on this. Sure. So we're passing in the date, but we're not doing anything with it. 
Nice. I'm going to go right here and say take min date, which is on the clipboard, and I'm going to come down and I am going to uh, go to this method has match. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose add parameter once again, right down there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to choose add parameter. I'm going to paste in min date and I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see what's happened over here. Coming over here, yeah. it's modified that call. It's giving me now the min date. And now what we can do is we can do some sort of test here. We can say um, if not null, uh, and I want, uh, it's just right here. And creation date uh, is greater than or equal to min date. So if it's not null and the creation that we're still good, we can still return that. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Okay? Sounds and good. I think, I think if we cross our fingers, we've done all this right. Um, this is now going to work. If we go in and now do do uh, a run of this, and we come in here, we say, well, search by itself gets us this. Now if we come in and say, well, let's uh, jump ahead um, to, uh, let's say, March 8th of 2017 and perform a search. Is that going to work? Is that going to, oh, we need to go even further out ahead. Let's go further. Let's go to get, get just to May 1st and see if we can only get results from May 1st on. Yeah. Okay. And sure enough, excellent. Awesome. Look at that. The cool thing. So yes, granted, I, my apologies for the length on, and the setup for showing this feature, but this is the kind of thing that I often find add parameters incredibly useful for mm -hmm. when we have layers of calls that are expecting one particular parameter going in, and we want to make a change. We want to add a parameter all along through those layers as we dive in to the code. Yeah, it's particularly. Sorry, it's particularly Good. useful in this scenario because you start with kind of knowledge of what you want to push into this API. So you, you select the thing to the clipboard in this case of, of the selected date from the calendar control and you elect, oh, okay, I want to push this into find. Okay, and having pushed it into find and created the new parameter in there, you make use of the parameter. And as it happens, you need to make use of the parameter by pushing it into a second uh, layer, as you suggest, of this particular algorithm, the has match function. Um, and having pushed it into there, you make use of it by making correct comparisons. And effectively what you're doing, it, it, this is kind of the API by example, as I sometimes call it. So you, you make the call and then make the call a reality. Yeah. And then you wind up pushing deeper and deeper. And now you can prove that it is all correct. And indeed, it's worked. Yeah, it's nice. Well, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, I guess we'll see you next week for another Code Rush feature of the week. For more feature of the week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.